What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't think I'd be doing a video like this this early. Uh, this is going to be kind of a roundup of what's happened for Chelsea this past month. Um, obviously, the season ended, but I'm talking about what happened after that. This is going to be a video that I'm going to do two more times this summer. It's going to be a wrap-up of pretty much what's gone on for that month as far as transfers, as far as, you know, manager movements, uh, stuff that really impacts Chelsea for the upcoming season. And so I thought, you know, I'd do my first video of these at the end of June, have a good bit of stuff to talk about throughout June. But then as May comes to an end, I realize there are a few big things to talk about. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and talk about them. So first off, obviously, is the biggest news, which has been just talked about on every form of social media for the past week, I think. Uh, it is it is the biggest news for Chelsea right now, and that is Mourinho to Man United. Um, some Chelsea fans are devastated. Some Chelsea fans are like, who cares? Some Chelsea fans are like, well, he's going to do terrible there as well. I'm of the opinion of who really cares you know at this point I think we should be more focused on us and rebuilding our team you know Conte coming in what he's going to do differently uh, the different formations that he could bring in the different tactics and honestly I think Mourinho is gonna have pretty much a similar time at Man U that he has everywhere else you know first year gonna do okay he's gonna be building the team second year he may win the title but then the year after things are going to start dropping off because he doesn't do long term very well. Um, especially, In fact, it may actually come sooner than it did at Chelsea. You know, there are so many people at Man U that I feel like he's going to clash with. And if you really look at Man U's season this year, one of the best parts about it was their youngsters, you know, Marcus Rashford, um, Fosa Mensah. They're not, in my opinion, they're not great players. I think they're good. Um, I don't think anybody really expected them to do as well as they did. And part of that plays into why they did so well. Um, there are certain players that when they come in, you don't know what to expect from them. You know, whenever you're watching the video for the team you're about to play, you're watching all of these professionals. You have hours and ap probably months of footage that you could watch to prepare for each of them. You know, like if you're watching tape uh, on Hazard, you can see what he does. You can see how he plays. Rashford coming in, nobody knows who he is. They don't know how he plays. So do we mark him closely? Do we let him have room to dribble? Do we try to cut off his pass? Do we try to mark him in the air? You know, what does he do? Nobody's really knowing what to expect, and that helps him out. Uh, Harry Kane was the same way when he first showed up. Nobody really knew who he was, and so... They didn't really know whether to mark him closely or to, you know, be ready to close him down when he gets the ball, and he took advantage of that in the air. You know, crosses came in, he's beating people, he's finding the goal. But then once they finally f figured out what to do, they started shutting him down. He didn't have a great start to the season this year, but then he developed his game to sort of change it up to uh, do more than just one thing, and now he's started to show himself as a striker, so... I, I do think that these young players are good, um, but I think, you know, to really become a great player, for these youngsters to truly grow, they need a good bit of game time. You know, they can't just, oh, we're just going to play for the first year, and now we're the best players ever. No, you need more time than that to grow. Mourinho's not going to do that. He's not a youngster manager. He's not somebody who's going to incorporate youngsters into the team. He's probably going to come in, buy a world-class striker that's going to sit Rashford probably in the reserves, and he's never going to see the light of day. And that's not what Man U fans want. Now, will he change to accommodate for that? Maybe. You know, maybe just... You can tell he kind of has a little bit of a vendetta against Chelsea because of what happened. Um... I think his ego is getting the best of him right now, and he really wants to show Chelsea up because of that. So he may get rid of his stubbornness as far as his tactics to sort of incorporate what he wants to do at Man U to get back at Chelsea. 
that's a possibility, but at the same time, I'm thinking he's just too stubborn to really give up what he does. You know, he, he's done it so well for so long. I don't think he's going to want to give that up. Um, but he's, I mean, he really does have a job on his hands because right now you look at the team that Man U has, and last year was, in my opinion, they could have done better, but now some of these players are losing it. Some of them haven't played as much this past year, so they really haven't been involved. So the team that I saw at the beginning of last year, I thought, wow, that's actually pretty good. Now I'm looking at it and thinking, no, now some of them are just completely useless. So, yeah, Mourinho to Man U, it could be a big deal, but at the same time, I think it's more of a big deal that we get our own team under control, that we figure out what's going to happen for this year. Um, so, that being said, there are a few transfer rumors going around, um, some of which are big, some of which are kind of small. And the first of which is actually <clears throat> kind of a big deal now. At, at the time, I wasn't really sure how to feel about it, but there were rumors going around that Raja Nainggolan was one that Chelsea were looking at getting. And there was a lot of talk that you know he would possibly come to Chelsea. I actually just read today, uh, it was an article from yesterday, that he turned down Chelsea and wants to go to Man U. And I think that kind of shows we could have done better. You know, we once again looking at Hiddink, seeing he came in and I think he did a very average job, just got us up to the top half of the table, and that's it. We could be in Europe right now and attracting players like Nine Golan, but because we're not, he'd rather go to Man U, even though they're in Europa, it's still Europe for him. And that's that's part of his thinking, I think. So it really is kind of the after effects of not just a poor first half of the season, but a very bleh second half of the season. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that that one is kind of frustrating. It was one that when I first heard about it, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, that's that, that could be something different. You know, I don't really know much about Nine Golan. I know he's on, you know, on FIFA in the next couple of years, you know, one of the... Premier League teams always signs him at some point, but the truth is, you know, Mangala was the same way, and now he's at Man City and not doing too well. So FIFA doesn't always have great prediction, but he is one that I knew was fairly young that could possibly bring something different, and I was excited to see him come. And now he's not coming. You know, he's going possibly to Man U. That's disappointing. Um, the other big news regarding Man U with Chelsea transfers is the talk that William was going to join Mourinho um, at Man U. I think there I think there were a couple players that were actually hurt when Man U left. I mean, not Man U, Mourinho left. I think William was one of those players. If you look at his performances in the first half of the season, he was amazing. You know, he tearing through teams sometimes single-handedly. He was getting the job done when other players were not. Then you look at the second half of the season. Mourinho left. His, he didn't score another free kick goal after Mourinho left. His performances dropped off a whole lot. Like, he only had a few real... When I think back to his performances in the second half of the season, I can only pick out a couple games where I thought, yeah, he played well that game. The rest of them, he was either okay or not involved at all. I'm worried that he really is a player who respected Mourinho even after all of that. And so if that's true, on the one hand, we don't want to sell William to Man U because it's Man U. We don't want to give them one of our better players. You know, a lot of people still complain about Mata. My opinion, he's a pretty good player, but we have better. You know, a lot of people now are obviously claiming, well, he's better than Oscar. Yeah, probably, but at the time, I think Oscar had a little bit of a something about him that was just like, you know, he's young, and I think he can grow. He hasn't grown, and that's part of the issue with him and why everybody wants him to leave. It's like... A couple years ago, when Mourinho first sold Mata, it was like, well, yeah, but we got Oscar. You know, he's 
he's coming into it. He'll grow. He'll become a better player. It's two years later, and Mott is still doing pretty much what he was doing at Chelsea, you know, similar stuff. Oscar has dropped off, if anything. So there's a lot of complaints with that sale. I think William would be a huge mistake. If we, you know, if he doesn't improve, maybe the thought of offloading him might be a good idea. But for right now, you know, you still got the first half of the season to look at and say, okay, yeah, he's a good player. He brings a lot to the field. He brings a lot defensively and offensively. But if he is upset that Mourinho got fired, if he is a player who actually supported Mourinho through all of this, then yeah, he's probably not going to be around for much longer. But we don't want to sell him to Man U where Mourinho is because then he's going to be tearing it up over at Man U, doing stuff for Mourinho there. So it's it's a very difficult situation. And kind of similar to the situation we found ourselves with Czech at the beginning of uh, the last summer. You know, he wanted a move to Arsenal. It's like, on the one hand, yeah, you've been a fantastic servant to the club. Yeah, Courtois is probably going to be our number one keeper. So it's hard to say no. It's hard to just completely turn you down. But at the same time, selling you to our rivals is not exactly something we want to do. So it was a very difficult situation, and I think we find ourselves in a similar situation where there's a player who has done very well for the club for the past few years, I mean, obviously not as much as Czech was doing, but it's hard to just be like, yeah, you know, we'll let you go where you want to go. Um, but I have a feeling that story is not done yet. You know, A lot of reports are saying that Conte wants William kept at the club, uh, it looks like the club is doing a lot of stuff to make it look like, you know, oh yeah, William's happy. Um, so we'll see where that goes, but it's one that definitely needs to be looked at. Uh, a couple of other just minor transfer stories, you know, I heard about a possibility of signing a center or defender or center back from some some lower club elsewhere. I feel like this... The, these little stories are going to be where it starts. Um, because a lot of people are talking about, yeah, we need to sign these big-name players. Well, the truth is, we don't really need to. You know, we do have a lot of big-name players already at the club, and what I'm about to talk about next, you know, Conte coming in, is keeping them at the club. So we don't really need to go out and completely, you know, okay, we need to buy a new center mid, we need to buy a new striker, we need to buy a new defense. We do need to buy more defenders, but I think we need to start looking at maybe some players who are playing for some lower teams who maybe have pretty decent talent and then try to develop them. You know, look at youngsters that maybe want to come into Chelsea and do stuff there. And we also have a lot of youngsters to look at as well. So I think the biggest aspect of this summer is not buying big name players. Because the truth is, we're not going to get a whole lot because we're not in Europe. You know, those big-name players are going to want to go to clubs that are in Europe for this next season. So it needs to start with maybe some players that aren't really on the radar, maybe some that we've looked at and thought, okay, yeah, you know, they're pretty good. We can, They can be useful. And start there. You know, start building from the bottom up. You know, not trying to start at the top because that's where clubs start to fall. Um, so anyway, uh, the final thing that I did want to talk about, of course, was Conte coming in, and really that helping a lot. I read an article on Facebook about it recently, that Conte coming in prevented, like, this mass exodus at Chelsea. I'm like, yeah, exactly. You know, we needed a big-name manager like that to come in and take over, because we're not in Europe next year, and a lot of these players probably want to be playing in Europe. And under Conte, it's like, well, next year, we'll be back in Europe. You know, the next season after this upcoming one, we will be back there because he's a manager that can come in and get the job done. He's a manager that knows what he's doing, that has done this for years, that took Juventus and won several trophies with them. So it does kind of bring a sense of excitement to the club. It prevents players like, you know, Hazard and Courtois and Costa from just, I want to leave. Hopefully, we start to see a lot of players renew contracts, decide, you know, I do want to stay. 
<clears throat> I do want to stay. I honestly think that a few of the players were already planning on staying because they wanted to prove themselves. Um, I feel like Fabregas was one of those players. Uh, I can't think of any others. I just remember reading something that he was talking about, you know, how he wanted to prove that this season wasn't who they were. And I'm just like, see, that sounds like a player who wants to make up, who wants to atone for what they went through this season. So it's kind of a mixed bag, but I'm excited to see where this uh, next season is going to go. I'm excited to see where this summer is going to go because it really does raise a lot of questions on what's going to happen. You know, what What is Conte going to bring to the table that we haven't seen already? You know, what is he going to change? Because that's kind of <laughs> what we missed in hitting. You know, whenever he came in, it was kind of like, all right, what's he going to change? What's he going What's he going to do differently that Mourinho didn't do? And ultimately, what he, what he did was pretty much what Mourinho did. Just the players were playing better, and that was all he really did. You know, he didn't change anything. In fact, the only thing he did change was putting Mikel out there instead of Madich, and Madich was playing better at that point, and Mikel's a terrible player. So all he really did was make things a little bit... Obviously, the players made things better, but he kind of made things a little worse. So we didn't really get that sense of, ooh, he changed up this and this and this, and it completely changed our season. With Conte, we're going to get that. He's going to come in. Um, a lot of people are talking about it. He's probably going to go to a 4-4-2. Maybe, maybe not, but at least he's bringing something different to the table because he is a well-established manager who has a style of play. Maybe he looks at Chelsea and says, you know, this 4-3 or 4-2-3-1 that you guys have been using, it's good, but it could be better. You know, there, there's something different, especially at a club like this, where we could be really playing with full force of our attacking and really take games to, to the other team, and that's the type of stuff that I want to see, so... A lot of interesting stories developing right now. Some good, some bad, some... Eh, <laughs> who cares? But yeah, it really does set up for a good summer. Um, the, the final thing, I, I forgot to mention this earlier, but it's something that I was thinking about when I first heard about all of this. One of the things that my dad talks about, and this is something that I don't really remember because I was younger and I wasn't really as focused back then, um, <clears throat> but he was talking about back in the first uh, Mourinho era, how it felt like they were signing these players out of nowhere. You know, Ian Robin, uh, Good Johnson, I think was another one. You know, just these players that it's like all of a sudden out of nowhere, oh, Chelsea has signed whoever. And so with this whole thing that happened at the beginning of last season, you know, Mourinho claiming I want to get John Stones, my dad was talking about how strange that felt because Mourinho and Chelsea normally keep it under wraps. You know, they don't like to throw, oh, we're, we're going after this player. That's not typically what they do. And so he was very concerned that this is a poor tactic. And it kind of made me think that whenever... He's sitting there claiming, I want to go get Willian. You know, I want Willian at Man U. It kind of had, had me going through the same reaction, you know. Like, this is strange. Why is he so out there about it, you know. And it did kind of affect Stones a little bit. So it could just be mind games. It could be messing with Chelsea and Willian, trying to make Willian feel like, oh, I'm wanted over there. Do I go over there? Maybe trying to mess with them a little bit? I don't know, but it just it seems very strange and seems like a bit of a desperation attempt from Mourinho. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how the summer goes. Um, I will try to keep up with as much of the transfer stuff as I can over the next month and uh, try to get you guys another video by the end of the month. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on transfer stuff manager stuff for Chelsea. Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, what do you want to see happen in the transfer uh, summer market, summer transfer market? Uh, what do you want to see happen as far as some transfer stuff with other clubs? Uh, if there's anything really big, I'll, I may talk about that. Um, and yeah, just leave your thoughts down below. We can discuss it. Leave a like and subscribe for 
future Chelsea stuff, and I'll see you in the next review. Peace out.